Hello everyone, welcome to TechTour.com. In this lecture, we will learn strict two-phase locking protocol. So in the last lecture, we have learned conservative two-phase locking protocol. And here we are learning strict two-phase. So in last lecture, we realized that in conservative two-phase locking protocol, we still have the problem of cascading rollback. So we introduce strict two-phase locking protocol. Right. So in strict two-phase locking protocol, one thing is this, this locking protocol is most popular because it is easy to implement and it also guarantees strict schedule. Why? Just because the additional rule which we implement here, but also it has some flaws which we will see. So in strict two-phase locking protocol, the rule is transaction T does not release any of exclusive lock until after it commits or abort. Okay, so it means that the transaction which is in progress will not be releasing any of the exclusive lock. Mind will, I'm talking about exclusive lock. Okay, so any of the exclusive lock will not be released until the transaction commits. Okay, or abort. Right. So if you want to draw this with the diagram, it's something like this. So here transaction starts and it starts getting locked. Okay, it start getting locks. So in this kind of locking protocol, we have growing phase, you can see, right? So here locks are acquired. Fine. Now, after this growing phase, when the unlocking starts, that is when this shrinking phase starts, you can see that only those items, only those items which were locked with read. Okay. For example, A, A was having this read lock. Okay. That is shared lock. Okay. So only those items are released or unlocked, which were having shared lock. Okay. Or read lock. Right. You can see this one or this one. So only read locks are released. And when transaction ends, okay, when the data is committed, then this exclusive lock, this was exclusive lock, right? Right lock means exclusive lock. So after commit, this exclusive lock is removed. Okay, that is B is unlocked. So as, as we unlock the right only after, only after this commit, it means that in this kind of transaction, we will not be having any dirty read, right? So when we don't have any dirty read, it means we will have only strict schedules, right? But now you can see that as we have growing phase here, okay, as we have growing phase, as we have growing phase here and also it is like simple two phase locking protocol or you can say uh, basic two phase locking protocol so here in growing phase we can acquire locks okay and also we can perform operations you can see that it is not like conservative protocol where all the locks are acquired first and then transaction will start executing so here operations may execute in between as it is growing phase right so in this case we can have deadlock like we were having in basic 2pl okay so the point is that it can have deadlock okay and as i was saying that this is most popular locking protocol and this is because it is strict okay and when it is strict recoverability is easy right and is that's why this is most desirable locking protocol okay so recoverability is easy okay so in this case recovery is easy and that's why it is most popular right now let's see the next version which is strict two-phase I mean which is uh, rigorous two-phase locking protocol 
regress two phase locking protocol is a bit enhancement over the restriction which was there in the strict two phase locking protocol so in strict two phase locking protocol we have this growing phase okay and once this unlock starts that is in shrinking phase we do not unlock those data or those items which were locked with exclusive lock okay until this is committed right so we only unlock exclusive locks after commit okay so unlock exclusive locks only after commit fine so this was our strict 2PL and it was generating a strict schedule and that's why recoverability was also easy in regress 2PL we have extra rule over this here we were allowing this read locks or that is shared locks to be unlocked right but in case of regress 2PL we even don't allow these unlockings okay so in regress two phase locking protocol we only allow this unlocking or all the unlockings after commit right so this is regress 2PL now you can understand of course that in this case also we can have deadlock right because these locks these locks are not acquired at once okay and that's why we can have that deadlock so the two phase locking which is deadlock free is conservative 2PL because in conservative 2PL all the data items or variable which is required during the transaction is acquired first is locked first and then transaction starts so as there is no case of waiting for any data item in future there is therefore there is no chance of deadlock otherwise you see that wherever we have this growing phase this can be a there can be a deadlock situation right so this is all about two phase locking now in next lecture let's do something let's compare all these two phase locking in a small video so that you know uh, we can have a better understanding or better clear cut uh, differentiation among these two phase locking protocols so see you in the next lecture thanks for watching